Hello there, folks. It is freezing out here. Well, it's like 50-some degrees, which, uh, I've lived in California too long, and that feels really cold in mid-December, which, actually, it's not really cold in mid-December, but there you go. Yesterday, at the Angel City Zen Center's regular Zoom thing that we do every Monday, which we're continuing to do throughout the Christmas season, by the way, so uh, you can tune in to those if you want all Christmas long. We talked about Soku Shin Zebutsu, Mind Here and Now is Buddha. Dave brought it in. It is an essay by Dogen, and it appears in book one of Master Dogen's Shobogenzo, as translated by Nishijima and Cross. It also appears in volume one of Shobogenzo, as translated by Kosen Nishiyama and John Stevens. It also appears in volume one of the two-volume set of Dogen's Treasury of the True Dharma Eye, done by, uh, translated by Kazuaki Tanahashi and the folks at San Francisco Zen Center. So he had a co-translator with each one, but it it varies from essay to essay, but uh, Kazuaki Tanahashi, I think, did all the translations from Japanese into English originally, and then the other people worked on it with him. So that's where it appears in there. Mind Here and Now is Buddha is the Nishijima Cross rendition of the title, Soku Shin Zebutsu, Mind Here and Now is Buddha, see? Tanahashi and his co-translator, who I haven't looked, you have to look it up in the thing in the back to find out who co-translated it with him, but uh, they translated it as Mind Itself is Buddha. And let's see, Kosen Nishiyama and John Stevens um, translated it as Our Mind is Buddha. I also did a version of this for my book, Don't Be a Jerk, which I don't have a copy of right now. It's, uh, it's uh, I don't know, it's somewhere else. And uh, so I didn't look at that, but that was the version that Dave read out last night. Uh, I get a little weird when people read out my versions of those things as if that's what Dogen said. And, and I think Dave understands this, and I hope the audience who watched yesterday understood this. That those, these are not, this isn't what Dogen said. This is like Dogen as passed through my mind. My metaphor is like those, there's this kind of coffee that is eaten by a certain rodent in uh, Asia and pooped out and then people drink the poop they they brew up the poop as uh, and drink it as coffee this is real <laughs> i forget exactly what this kind of coffee is called but that's what you're getting if you read my version of it you're kind of getting a version of that if you read any version of it in english but you know for people who don't speak japanese that's what they're going to read uh, but the version by nishijima and cross is for my money the closest you're going to get to the Japanese. And if I, if I can find the link, I'll put it down below, but there is a, a thingy online where somebody has put up various Dogen translations. Uh, I think uh, it was Mike Lutchford from uh, Nishijima Roshi's group, one of Nishijima Roshi's other Dharma heirs, who put this up, where you can see the Japanese and the English side by side, the Nishijima Cross English and the Japanese side by side. And I had a look at that before I did this video just to see what was going on in there. It's a weird passage by Dogen, Mind Here and Now is Buddha, because it sort of says, in a way, it says the thing that the guy from Ancient Aliens never said, which is, I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. Dogen does this a lot in his, in his uh, stuff, in his writings. Uh, he kind of goes, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. So, I'm going to read kind of taking, ha having read Nishijima Cross, Nishiyama Stevens, and Tanahashi and whoever uh, all this morning, I thought I would read from the Nishiyama Stevens one because I feel like even though it's not a perfect translation, it's not a translation that's super faithful to the original, but it helps kind of make the point that I think that Dogen is making in this essay, and when you read it in the Nishijima cross version, that point is kind of 
opaque and in the Tanahashi version it's a bit opaque too. Here the contrast between the two things that Dogen is trying to contrast seems a little clearer to me. So I'm going to read that to you but probably not in its entirety. So here goes. The central teaching of Buddhism is our mind is Buddha. Mind here is now is Buddha or uh, what is uh, whatever Tanahashi says. What does he say? The mind itself is Buddha. Uh, there's a whole reason for that, and I think they're all decent translations of what Dogen says. Um, uh, Sokushin say Butsu. That the word Soku is difficult. It's sort of like this very mind is Buddha. So, and the the character for mind is Shin, which could also mean heart. And there was a big discussion about that last night. But that's neither here nor there for that time being. Let's just go with the translation of mind. However, in the scriptures first produced in India, the idea of our mind is Buddha was not promulgated. It was not until the Chinese Zen masters that this idea was fully developed. Now, this is a kind of weird thing, and this is just arcane nerd nonsense for most of you, but um, Nishima and Cross translate that as... Many students, however, misunderstand that mind here and now as Buddha did not exist in India, but was first heard in China. So that's the way they say it. They say the students misunderstand that it did not exist in India and was first heard in China. Everybody else who translates it, translates it as the mistake is thinking that it was heard in India and was not and, and no, the mistake is that it was from India. Anyway, they basically say that it was first heard in China and never said in India. I just read the Japanese because I was like, well, who's right on that? And when I read the Japanese, I get the same interpretation as Nishijima and Cross do, that the mistake is students thinking that it did not exist in India. Um, but the, everybody else thinks the mistake is, is thinking it did exist in India. The point is that Dogen is trying to say, and I think Nishijima and Cross are right, that mind here and now is Buddha goes all the way back to the Buddha. It doesn't, it's not something that originated in China. That's what he's saying. But these other guys, if you want to go with Tanahashi or uh, Nishiyama Stevens, they, they say that's wrong. But I, I don't see how they get that reading. Sorry. Don't see it. When foolish people hear the expression, our mind is Buddha, they think there is no need to practice Buddhist training since their mind is already enlightened. This is a great error. Such people have never seen a true master and their enlightenment is nothing but an illusion. The following story illustrates the form that such an erroneous thinking takes. Once there was a non-believer in India called Seneca, and I looked him up on the internets, and I, I don't know, all I could find out is there was a, a, an ascetic named Seneca at the time of Buddha, and maybe that's who he's referring to, but there isn't a whole lot of information on Seneca other than what you get from Dogen, which Dogen kind of tells you a lot about Seneca, but where is he getting it from? We don't know. I don't know, anyway. Somebody knows, maybe. I don't know. He explained that the great way existed in our body and could easily be understood. Through this wisdom, he said, suffering and non-suffering, hot and cold, and pain and pleasure could be distinguished. It is not influenced by objects or circumstances, even though things are always coming and going and circumstances appear and disappear. The great way exists everywhere, and there is no distinction between ordinary people and saints. Illusion appears and disappears in our experience. Only this wisdom, Seneca taught, exists. Objectivity falls away. Even if our body is destroyed, wisdom does not perish. It comes out of the body just like people come out of a burning house. And this word that they are translating as wisdom, I had to look up at that. It is a combination of two characters, re, which is spiritual, and uh, shi, which is wisdom. I don't know if it's pronounced re, shi, but anyway, it's... Uh, so spiritual wisdom. So uh, Tanahashi and his co-translator translate this as soul, and Nishima uh, Cross, I think, translate it as spiritual wisdom, spiritual intelligence, something like that. la -di -da. Everyone possesses enlightenment. This is Seneca's philosophy again. Original nature covers both illusion and enlightenment. Wisdom can never be reduced to only one thing and differs from physical objects. Furthermore, wisdom exists forever. It, he also said, Seneca, that wisdom exists in objectivity and possesses real existence, that is, it possesses real substance and cause and effect. However, wisdom is not the same as objectivity that continually appears and disappears. Wisdom is not concerned with light or dark. Uh, through knowledge, everything becomes clear. In other words, we will attain real self, original enlightenment, real nature, and real body. If we comprehend this real nature, we will return to eternal existence. We will arrive at the great ocean of the real self, which is in which life and death are no longer present. Because the real self is prevented from appearing 
everywhere in the six worlds of samsara arise, and those are the, the different forms of existence a thing can have. And anyway, This is Seneca's teaching. Now, then there follows another bit where Dogen expounds Seneca's teaching again, but this time through the voice of uh, Nanyo Echu, who is an ancient uh, Zen master, uh, one of the students of Daikon Eno Hoine. But he basically says kind of the same thing again. And now, after he does that, Dogen finally tells us what he thinks, which he says is totally different from what Seneca thinks. The teaching, Our Mind is Buddha, has been transmitted from Buddha to Buddha and patriarch to patriarch. It is the supreme Buddhist teaching, etc., etc. And he's saying all this stuff about how great it is. Uh, no matter how we phrase it, our mind is Buddha, Buddha is mind, it is the basic doctrine and transmission of the way we study. So he's saying mind, here and now, is Buddha, that's right, but what's different from what Seneca says about it? Our mind is everything, everything is contained in one mind. Okay, that's the, this is Dogen saying what he thinks is correct, as opposed to what Seneca says, which he says is incorrect. This is the mind that has been transmitted to the present day. Ancients said that if the mind is clear, we can understand everything. The sky can collapse and the earth disintegrate, but mind will remain. If we can master this mind truly, all our actions will bear fruit. And then we have a quote from Master Gyozan, who was asked, What is the transcendent, pure, and radiant mind? Same mind. He replied, Mountains, rivers, earth, sun, moon, and stars. Mountains, rivers, and earth are just mountains, rivers, and earth. There is nothing extra. Do not be concerned with externals like waves or clouds. Sun, moon, and stars means the true, natural existence of sun, moon, and stars. There is no fog or mist. By the way, all this stuff is Dogen speaking. It's not him quoting, uh, who was he quoting before? <laughs> God, my brain. Gyozan. It's, it's, this is Dogen. The mind of life and death is only life and death, coming and going. There is no illusion or enlightenment. The mind of walls, tiles, stones is nothing but walls, tiles, and stones. There is no mud or water. In the mind of the four elements and the five skandhas, there are no horses or monkeys. Uh, that might be a, 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 an allusion to the way time is uh, was figured in those days, or it might mean um, jittering, you know, monkey mind, that sort of thing. Uh, la -di -da. In the mind of a chair or a hosu, that's a whisk, there is no wood or bamboo. To summarize, our mind is Buddha. Original purity is our mind. Buddha is Buddha. Remember, though, that real Buddha mind is detached even from these statements. So even saying that is not right. Okay. Our mind is Buddha cannot be separated from the resolve to attain supreme enlightenment, religious practice, enlightenment, or nirvana. If we have not experienced these, we can never understand the significance of our mind as Buddha. Yet, if we have true experience of those things, even for just an instant, we will be able to comprehend our mind as Buddha. If someone says that this expression can only be understood after years of study, this means he does not have a clear understanding. He never had a correct view of the law, which is Dharma, or met a true master. Buddha means Shakyamuni Buddha. He symbolizes all the past, present, and future Buddhas. Shakyamuni Buddha is our mind is Buddha. The end. Clear as mud, right? As my grandma always used to say, or my grandpa, or one of those people used to always say. So the distinction I feel that Dogen is making is that when you say everything is mind, you mind here now is Buddha, or everything is mind, the world is mind, and you separate mind from matter, that's a mistake. You, you, when you say mind here and now is Buddha and you feel that mind is one thing, uh, the world is another thing, that's the mistake. When he goes in and says the mind is the sun, moon, and uh, stars, or the mind is fences, tiles, walls, and pebbles, um, the mind is a whisk, and all this other stuff that he says, he's saying that all that stuff is mind. So this computer, whatever you're watching this on, this uh, laptop or iPad or iPod or whatever device you're watching this on, is, is mind. Uh, your body is mind. Mind is not separate from body. So, again, I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. I'm not saying mind here and now is Buddha, but mind here and now is Buddha. That's what Dogen is saying. And he's trying to kind of give a, a, a more advanced picture of what things are. So that it's not that there is a mind inside the body that 
you know, departs from the body and leaves and goes away. Uh, it goes somewhere else and gets reincarnated as something else. The mind and the body are one continuum of which Dogen tends to favor the explanation that it is mind. So he doesn't favor the explanation that body, matter, is the real constituent of the thing. He tends to favor the, the explanation that mind is the real thing, is, is a better explanation, but he also cautions us not to think that we got it if we think that there's a separate mind and a separate matter, and it's all different. Oh my god. I think I just made a mess out of this. I, I know I tried to explain it, and I feel like mm, this is really difficult stuff. So if you got any questions, ask me some questions. Uh, see where we get with this. Maybe we can go on, because it's an interesting topic for me. Anyway, that's where I get with this, and, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to send me a donation to keep me going, you can send it to the links that you will find from going to this URL that you're seeing on the screen. If you do not have money and you're having financial trouble, don't send me money, uh, but uh, because I'm doing all right. But uh, it is because people do send me money that I am doing all right. So I thank you for that. Uh, keep it going if you can. Don't keep it going if you can't keep it going. That's fine. We'll manage one way or the other. See you later on, and have a good time all the time. Bye.